All right, so we see the election results and we're starting to see some of the results coming in. And uh, I think it's pretty clear right now at this point that Joe Biden is going to be the next president elect. All right, so I was wrong about the, my Lindsey Graham prediction and that's unfortunate, but I was absolutely right about Joe Biden. And the reason why I was right about Joe Biden and the reason why I think uh, this, this video is going to be very important for my channel, uh, I'm going to say some things that's going to upset some people. And you can go right and tell whoever I'm talking about, but um, I'm going to talk about some content creators and talk about some politicians and some local stories uh, about how people have been reacting. So how did I know that Joe Biden was going to win? Well, I told you in the live stream uh, the day before the election, I had a live stream where I discussed my election prediction. Here's a clip from November 2nd with my election prediction and a detailed explanation as to why I made that prediction. Who do I think is going to win? So I'm going to say that Donald Trump has a good chance of winning, but that's what my heart tells me. My head tells me is going to be Joe Biden. Joe Biden, uh, the reason why I think he's going to win is it, it comes down to some. Um, it, it really, really comes down to something that's relatively simple. Uh, early voting. Early voting is going to play a big role in this election. Now, what I mean by that is this. Early voting typically favors Democrats. Now, we know this because we've seen this from election data from, from elections past. We know that already because of COVID, two-thirds of the electorate has already voted, you know, or something close to that. So with so many of the electorate that's already voted, you have to kind of imagine that that would favor Democrats a lot. Now, election day, I do suspect that there's going to be a huge turnout for Trump voters. Um, it's it's, it's going to be lines around the corner, around the corners and corners and corners. But I don't think that Trump should rely on that. I think that that he made a huge mistake by not pushing early voting, because when you look at a pandemic and you look at you know people who are genuinely afraid of coming out of coming outside, if you don't push something that 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 is that that basically allows distancing to kind of make those people feel comfortable, well, you, you kind of shoot yourself in the foot there, you know. So if if you notice the Democrats, they have embraced that full head on because they understand that given the current times, given the times that, that we're in, people don't want to go outside as as often, especially when it's when the voting time frame is in November. That's when things are gonna be cold out. You know, maybe you're in like a warmer state or like a warmer climate, but for a good bit of the world, a good bit of the the U.S. population, you know, people are getting out their freaking like snow chains for their freaking tires on their on their cars. You know, it's it's actually cold out. So when when it's cold out, the, the virus is suspected to do more damage. And if that's the case, people don't want to come outside as often. They want to mail things in. They want to pay bills online. They, they don't want to go in person to go to go and pay bills. They don't want to pay their cell phone bills in, in person. They weren't doing that even when there wasn't a pandemic. But now that, that, that there is a pandemic, they definitely don't, don't don't want to come outside and wait in long lines and then and then risk getting sick. So when Trump did this whole silly pushback on early voting, I think that that kind of sealed the deal for him. Um, I think that in any other situation, um, Donald Trump beats Joe Biden. Without question, Joe Biden is not—it's not a good candidate. He's not even trustworthy. I mean, let's 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 not even get into the whole crime bill crap and all the other silly stuff that he he he, he gonna say. You know, the, the you ain't black stuff. That that stuff is a given. I mean, that that's that's obvious. That's that's low hanging fruit. You don't have to try very very hard to to hit Joe Biden on that point. But the point that I want to make about Donald Trump is that, and and, and it's a point that I want to make about the. the Republican Party. Um, there is this unwillingness to read the temperature of a room, to plan ahead, right? You have people who have this, I, I would say almost, I don't know how to kind of describe it, but there's this belief that, you know, you can do things the exact same way and it's going to come out and, and, and that it's going to come across the exact same way to everybody. And I, I was hoping that one of the hints that I dropped would have kind of told people that, uh, yeah, 
uh, I know what I'm talking about. And the reason why I say that is simple. I told you that I recently traveled from South Carolina to Washington State. And I drove here. I didn't fly here. I, dr I drove on the road. I spent over three days cumulative on the road. And I went the long way intentionally so because I was very curious about what people thought about Joe Biden versus the president. And so I actually asked people in no less than 10 states. Some of them are the very battleground states that we're talking about, like Pennsylvania. Um, I actually took the long way around to Georgia. And the one thing I noticed was the crazy demographic rises. And that's why in the live stream, I even said, you know, it's going to come down to those big, <laughs> those big metropolitan areas like, like Atlanta. I, I don't think people realize how big and how huge and how populated Atlanta is. You know, a good bit of your air travel comes through Atlanta. I remember I was watching Family Guy and uh, Stewie Griffin, he made a, a joke about it. He's like, uh, it, it was a Star Wars uh, special. And he was like, you know, I, I went to Dagobah, you know, Dagobah planet. And he said, that I, still, I still had to do like an interchange between like Atlanta. So it's like he's, he's they, they were kind of like making a joke about it, how so many people travel there. And if so many, and if so many people travel there, what typically happens in those areas is that people tend to stay. And if they tend to stay... Um, if it's a large, if it's a large metropolitan type, type of area that's in the South, that's right next to South Carolina, that has such a huge black population. Well, you've seen what's happening in Atlanta, Forsyth County, uh, DeKalb. Um, basically, I kind of knew how those places are like laid out because uh, my ex-wife and uh, and. You know, her family is like down in that area. And I, I went to AIT or advanced um, advanced training for your MOS job in the Army. AIT training in Fort Gordon, Georgia. And uh, I also have family in Georgia. I've also been in South Carolina for more than 30 years. And South Carolina is right directly next to Georgia. So I used to go to Georgia all the time. So I know the people there. I, I kind of know how things are going there. Um, and so basically what happens is a lot of people on the right don't seem to realize that when given the choice, a lot of minorities and a lot of women, a lot of people, uh, uh, the LGBT people, when given the choice, they pick Biden. Now, the question becomes, why did they, did they pick Biden? It comes down to perception, right, uh, for a lot of people. Now, for a lot of people, it was COVID. And that, and, and, and I'm, I'm going to get into that a little bit later. This is going to be a little bit of a long form type of video, whereas uh, a lot of other, a, a lot of other content creators say that uh, people like me can't do long form videos, even though I do it all the time. Uh, they'll, they'll say because I stutter, um, basically, I can't do a long form, form video. Well, my response to those people is that you're sitting there with egg in your face when I look like I'm, I'm when I when I came out smelling like a freaking rose. So my stuttering might be there, but uh, you're wrong. So. Um, the other thing I want to point out about is perception. How do people perceive the right? Well, I want you to understand something. I want you to hear me correctly. I am not suggesting that the right is the party of racists. I am not suggesting that the right is a party that hates women. I am not suggesting that the right uh, loves the drug war, loves mass incarceration. But a system is not what you design it. A system is what it accomplishes. It doesn't matter what you describe yourself as if what you are accomplishing gives off a certain perception okay you cannot be the party of that 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 wants mass incarceration even though democrats have done that especially especially in california but that's not how the average person perceives it fair or unfair true or untrue that's not how the average person perceives it all right so when you have a scenario where a party appears to some people to support mass incarceration, definitely support the drug war because when it comes to marijuana, the only places that's really illegal are Republican states. So you can't say that's just that's just perception. No, that's actually reality. You look at uh, uh, some of the support for cops. No matter if the cops are right or wrong, you're, you're seeing that 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 blind support. All right. So understand something that gives minorities a perception. Some minorities, not not all of them. But some of them, and I'm telling you this as somebody who recently went to Georgia, 
who lived next to Georgia for over 30 years, who has family in Georgia, who went to AIT school in Georgia, who spent multiple years in Georgia. I'm telling you, the fact that I went to AIT school tells you I had to have lived in Georgia for at least for at least a a, a certain amount amount of time because you have to act because because you gotta stay at the barracks. So I was there. I can tell you how the people are there. And there are certain rural counties. Uh uh um Georgia is usually a very red state. However, there are huge metropolitan areas that have huge Hispanic and black communities that have grown over time. And the Republican Party has has ignored those people and ignored their plight. Had you listened to some of the Atlanta rappers like the Outkast, the Ludacris, um, you listen you listen to a lot of lot of um, a lot of rappers from the ATL or Atlanta, that's the that's the abbreviation, the acronym. If you listen to those people, they're telling you what the black community wants there. They want legal weed. They want more jobs. They want the cops to stop messing with them. They want to, they, they want to end mass, they, they want to end mass, mass incarceration. This is why Donald Trump, he talked to 50 Cent, Lil Wayne, Ice Cube, I mean, freaking Lil Pump, a bunch of rappers. Because the rappers historically, from what, from what you might have noticed is that yeah, they talk about a lot of negative stuff. They talk about shooting people, killing people, drugs, uh, abusing women, all that stuff. But they do also, in some of those songs, give you nuggets and insight to what the black community is asking for. So this is why a lot of times you get rappers who will, who will come forward and uh, they'll be the voice of the, of, the, of, the, of the black community. And a lot of people are wondering why. It's because a lot of those guys, especially guys like Ice Cube, you listen to like a lot of his earlier stuff, from NWA, he talks about some of the issues in the black community. You know what I'm saying? He was talking about real stuff, man. Real stuff. You know? And so, if you listen to, to those, it, it's, it's so bizarre that the right was embracing Ice Cube, embracing 50 Cent, embracing Lil Pump, embracing Lil, Lil, Lil Wayne, especially like Lil Wayne and like Ice Cube, and yet they hadn't listened to any of their lyrics to understand why you're having such a hard time in Georgia. You know, and so this is why the whole thing with Ice Cube and all the black rappers and everything, it was so disingenuous because we knew, especially me, uh, a, a lot, a, a lot of people in the black community, they knew that, you know, you can, you can sit there and you can mention Lil Pump and Lil Wayne and 50 Cent and all those guys, but I know that you're not playing 50 Cent or, you know, you're not, you're not playing, you know, in the club or, or the Carter or you, you're not playing, you know, Fuck the police uh, coming straight from the underground at the next RNC. You, you're not playing that song at the RNC. You know, fuck the police coming straight from the underground. You're not playing that at the freaking RNC. But I, I, I can see the Democrat Party playing that at the Democrat National, National Convention. So they come across as less disingenuous as the right does. As, as the Republican, as, as, as the Republican Party does. And that's a problem. Because this, there's a saying in, in, in the black community, real recognize real. And you looking real unfamiliar right now. See, blacks, much like, uh, Hispanics, much like Native Americans, we've been lied to for so long to the point where it's hard to bullshit us. This is why no matter how much the right tries to convince us that the police are these angels who are all perfect, none of them lie, none of them, none of them are racist, none of them unjustly shoot people. The reason why we don't believe you is because you've been telling us, tell us the, the, the exact same thing during the 60s and 70s when you knew that wasn't true. And even now, in a lot of cases, not in, I, I would say not in most cases, but a lot of cases, it's still true. But you still deny it. So that's why overall, especially when we look at the whole George Floyd thing and some of the the ridiculous opinions from the right and some of the bootlickers, some of the OTL, some of the muffin blue line people. You're looking at Atlanta, Georgia. Georgia, a southern state that's known to have a history with police brutality and racism with black folk. 
the right hasn't even fully rejected the alt-right yet. I mean, Donald Trump has. Donald Trump has rejected white supremacy several times on camera. But it's not Donald Trump that's the problem here. It's some of the people who support him. You are some of you are some of the worst. All right, you you are the equivalent of cowboy fans. It's not the Dallas Cowboys that I hate so much. It's their and it's their nauseating fans who brag about things. Ain't won a Super Bowl in forever. Barely can win a freaking playoff game. But you're still bragging because you're delusional. And a lot of people on the right right now, especially some of the people who are being ridiculous with all these conspiracy theories, you're delusional. I told you Joe Biden was going to win. I told you the black vote was going to play a big role. And in Georgia right now, it's playing a huge role. Even if Donald Trump wins Georgia in 2024 and beyond, is the Republican Party going to ever win Georgia ever again? Because by 2020, by 2024 and 2028 and by 2032, the black community and, and the minority community in general in Georgia will, will be so insurmountable that you will have to appeal to us. You don't have a choice anymore. You know, this whole Blexit, uh, uh, platinum plan, uh, uh, giving us breadcrumbs. And I, and I mean this for both Democrats and Republicans. This whole thing with, with, with giving us breadcrumbs. Those things are over. Those days are over. You know, Tom Perez, back um, during 20, uh, I think it was 2017, 2018, Tom Perez, who is the leader of the DNC, uh, he even said that for the longest time, the Democratic Party took the votes of black people in Georgia and, and the votes of blacks in, in the country for granted. The leader of the DNC said that. And so what did they do? They got Stacey Abrams, who lost the the, the gubernatorial race in Georgia got her, got her to start a coalition got her to, 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 to do the grassroots work you 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 didn't see Stacey Abrams in the, in the Democrat Party uh, looking at George Floyd and saying well look at his history he deserved it meanwhile you got Republican politicians who are in my opinion worse my opinion crooks and robbers in my opinion, war criminals. You openly, uh, you, you, you openly invite George Bush. George fucking Bush. A man who got some of my bestest friends in the world killed. One of my best friends in the world right now has PTSD, crippling PTSD. And that man was my roommate in combat because of George Bush. You openly invite that man to, to the White House knowing he's a war criminal. And yet you want to sit here and tell me about how bad George Floyd was when he did his time. And George Bush didn't suffer a day in prison for the war crimes he's responsible for. See, that's the level of, of, of hypocrisy. The, the out of touchness, the, the daftness some people on the right have. You just had a man named Jeffrey Epstein be <clears throat> who uh, killed himself. And you sat there and you made all these memes saying, ah, oh, he didn't kill himself and everything else. And you and you claimed it was about, you know, you know, you 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 just wanted justice. You wanted people on the list. Right. You questioned that death and you and you scrutinized that death. And you didn't have video, you, 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 you didn't have a real video evidence because the correctional officers, the, the correctional officers in, who were involved in the case who happened to be asleep. The cameras just so happened to not work at the time. And yet you asked questions with all that stuff. But when it came to Breonna Taylor, somehow she, she deserved it. And yet you're wondering why you're having such a problem with minorities voting for you in Georgia right now. You don't think that we watch the news. You don't think that we can see through bullshit. You don't think that at some point when you keep showing us who you are over and over and over again, we're going to we're going to start believing you. Hmm. No, 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 no. All that stuff that you justified with, with, with Donald Trump is coming back on you. See, you can't mention gun rights anymore because Trump said 
I like to take the guns first when it comes to mental health and when it, when it comes to red flag laws. Hmm? I, I didn't forget that. How about his, uh, his, his bump stop ban? Oh, well, is he just a bump stop? I don't want to hear it. It's anti second amendment. So you would have gotten more people who are pro second amendment like myself to vote for you had you not done that. And I'm, I'm just looking at a lot of the stuff that Donald Trump claimed to have stood for. Fair and open elections. And yet right now you're getting your butt kicked. And all I'm seeing you doing is obstructing. All I'm seeing you doing is, is spread conspiracy theory after conspiracy theory. Because you are a spoiled, immature child. I voted for Donald Trump in 2016. I would have never said this four years ago. I would have never said this four years ago. So the fact that I'm saying it now, after, after, after I already predicted he was going to lose before the election. So no, this, this is not just some grift. What you're hearing is the honest truth about how I feel about Donald Trump at the moment. I feel that he's a sore loser. I feel that the Republican Party, a good bit of it, has a tough time dealing with defeat. Because you thought that your, at your, at your Blexit, your platinum plan, your false promises to women, your, your, your appealing to women by putting people like Amy Coney Barrett on, on the Supreme Court after people like Lindsey Graham already said you shouldn't just be putting Supreme Court justices before the election, let the next, next administration pick it. You stand for nothing anymore. This is the reason why, you know, the, the, the original reason why I picked the Republicans over, over the Democrat party is because you used to stand for something. You stood for something. What the fuck do you stand for now? Gun rights? You got Lindsey Graham, red flag laws. Do you support uh, ending uh, mass surveillance? You blind support cops and law enforcement. And the FBI, Homeland Security, they're law enforcement. So we can never question them because you are in the fucking way, you assholes. You can't, in one breath, talk to me about uh, mass surveillance and ending mass surveillance and yet, whenever I decide to question the FBI, oh, they're good people. Do, do, do you see the problem there? This is why you lost so many libertarians. And you also lost so many independents and, and hippie-style voters and libertarian-style style voters because of your incessant support of the drug war. You refuse to call out Donald Trump. You refuse Refuse to call up the Republican Party, all right, for their for their support of the freaking drug war. Now, granted, I will say that for eight years, Bill Clinton didn't legalize weed, and neither and neither did Barack Obama, and that's a perfectly fair criticism. But guess what? Donald Trump also had four years to do it, and now it's going to be Joe Biden. So, no matter how you slice the dice, it's going to be a Democrat that does it. It should have been a Republican, all right. It should have been a Republican, and it should have been a a a, a Republican for a historical reason. If you look at the very first anti-weed le anti legislation that was ever done in this country, it was the Marijuana Tax Act. Go look at the administration and it was in and, 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 and go and go look it up and see if it was a Democrat or Republican who did it. The Marijuana Tax Act was passed in the form of a tax, much like Obamacare was. And so when you get Republicans talking about Obamacare say, oh, oh, well, well the, uh, Justice John Roberts, he, he, he said that it's, it's actually a tax and that's why it's legal and, and this is actually unconstitutional. Well, the exact same argument could be made for the very first marijuana legislation in the country. Where's your arguments? Or do you just not read history? Do you just pick and choose the history, you know, that supposedly support you? The Republican Party fleet the slaves. 
and yet you put more slaves behind bars than you ever had slaves in the country uh, via the 13th Amendment and via the goddamn drug war. So shut the hell up about that. Don't ever say that again. You cannot mention slavery to me, and yet you have no problem with somebody being thrown in the goddamn cage should they smoke a plate in South Carolina. Or 17 other or 17 other states that are mostly Republican. In fact, I think almost all of them are, are actually Republican. I don't think there's any Democrat or even like somewhat centrist state there. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure at the very least the vast majority of them are actually Republican that are anti weed And for some reason, some of you think that in 2020 and going beyond, the country's going to be okay with that. You're not cool with the kids, okay? The alt-right was a cool experiment. All right, they were a very cool experiment, but you see how long they, they fucking lasted, right? The kids, they're going to go with who seems the coolest, right? It's not you right now. You support cops and you, and you are against weed if you're on the right. What young person is going to vote for you going forward? They're not going to. So right now, the Republican Party needs to do some soul searching. The All Lives Matter crowd, exiled. They got to go. Now, you can't just tell somebody not to show up to a, to a, to a convention, not to show up and support you, not to vote for you. But you can't tell them this flat out. Listen, we need to get votes in Atlanta. And All Lives Matter is not going to cut it. All right, the alt right, the racist party, your party, anybody who makes a racist statement, they got to go. Fair, fair, or unfair, they got to go. Because you see, that's killing you in Atlanta right now. I'm telling you, as somebody who's been to Georgia no less than six times this year, no less, I'm telling you, that's killing you right now. But I guarantee you in the comment section and, and, and beyond, you're still going to have people who's going to struggle. And that's okay. That's okay. Because, you know, as a, as a saying, you, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. And I'm trying my best to, to like, like my dog's head hit, my dog's huge head. I'm trying to force your head into the damn water, but you ain't drinking for, you ain't drinking shit. Bruh. Bruh, listen, I understand that I was wrong about Lindsey Graham and, and a few other things, but when it comes to being to, to the general election and, and general insights into social things, I have a knack for this. I'm pretty good at this. Get rid of the all lives matter crowd. Support gun rights because that's going to guarantee you a lot of votes, especially during this time period. Um... You know, that, that can, that could show up some votes and that, and that could at the very least, at the very least, stop some of the bleeding. Because a lot of black folks will support you, even if you, they aren't too sure about you, if, 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 if you support gun rights. Because a lot more, there are a lot more gun owners in the black community than what people let on. A lot more gun owners in the, in the minority community, especially among women, than people let on. Uh, a lot of times people, the same way pe pe people don't, if, if, if people will, will, will lie about their, their secret support of Donald Trump, why in the world are they going to be so open about how many guns that they, they own? They're, they're not even open with you about their voting choices. I'm damn sure I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, if, I, 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 if, if, if you are the type of person to be open with their voting choices like, like I am, then maybe you you will talk you, you will talk talk about your guns. But if you're dealing with somebody who won't even tell you what their voting choices are, they're probably not going to tell you about their guns either. So, you know, they, there are a lot more gun owners with demographics that that, that the Republican Party and, and and the right in general are losing with. You know, that you might realize. Um, you you have various other issues on the right. Uh, the the support of mass incarceration in the right you know some some of the worst numbers you're seeing are coming out of right wing states now granted like, like i said you look at places like new york and california it's pretty bad there too however they are trying to change course the right is not even attempted I'm, I'm just being perfectly honest with you it's not even attempted and that's sad you know um this incessant need to bootlick 
You cannot be a bootlicker and then scream 1776. You cannot be a bootlicker and talk to me about Waco. You cannot be a bootlicker and then tell me about the Epstein suicide. You cannot talk out of both sides of your mouth. Okay? Because not just with black folk, but also white folk too. A lot of white folk, they're going to call bullshit on you. And they're going to not vote for you because they think you're full of shit. That's reality. You cannot like it. You cannot like me. You can think I'm what I'm saying is it's all this bullshit. You can think I'm that what I'm saying is is is, is atrocious. You can think that I'm the, the worst. You know, you can call me a lip tar, you call me all that stuff. I'm not, I'm on the right still. The problem is, is that some of you much like you know, just like just like the left has moved so far to the left to the point where it's, you know, if you're to the right of Mao or if you're to the right of 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 Maduro in Venezuela, you know, you are basically a Nazi. Well, the same thing is happening on the right, where if you're to the left of Hitler, in some cases, you know, you're a liptard. In fact, I, I, I had a few with the alt-right. You know, me and Kraut and T and a few other people had, had a few with with, with the alt-right. And I remember some, some of the screenshots from that, man. And and um, basically, like, pretty much, if you're to the left of, in some cases, Hitler, or in some cases, like, even a little bit to the left of, you can take somebody, some of the most right wing, hardcore right Republicans in this big country, and then you're you are considered to be no different than like anti. I mean, <laughs> what the right has not realized is that you've lived in an echo chamber for so long to the point where you have not realized that the same way that, that the left has moved further to the left, you've moved further to the right. To the point where I don't even recognize you anymore. You you really have to do some soul searching. Calm down. Stop foaming at the fucking mouth. Stop reading. Stop screeching. Stop acting like the libtards you call people all the time. Take a pause. Take a take a week vacation. Take some time off. Get off the internet for like a good a good a good little minute. Stop arguing with people. Soul search and reflect and realize what you have become. See, not just you losing this election. See, you just losing this election, that's not an issue that you should worry about. It's the future. It's 2024. It's 2028, 2032, 2036, 2040, 2044, 2040, 2040, 2040, 2042. What are you going to win going forward if you can't? even reliably win Georgia and in fact you might still lose it as the recording of this video they have not still done the count but right now Forsyth County is killing you Atlanta is killing you that's going to be a problem going forward this is not just a problem for this general election going forward that's going to be an issue deal with it or don't continue to slide off into the party of bootlicking continue to slide off slide continue to slide off into into the party of justifying someone being locked up for smoking a goddamn plant. Oregon right now has decriminalized, you know, hard drugs. You told me that when they decriminalized uh when they when they legalized marijuana, the sky was going to fall. You told me that when that when Colorado uh decriminalized suicide mushrooms, the sky was going to fall. You told me all that, and none of that was true. And you knew it was true. You knew it was based off, off, a reef, off a reef of madness. And yet, even then, you didn't even bother, bother to correct the police officers who were falsely quoting bullshit stats that you knew was bullshit. But you said nothing because my police are awesome. None of them, you know, they are all infallible. And that, I know I keep going back to that, but that should be a bellwether to know how far you slipped. It's not the country who slid to left. It's you. It's you who has slid to right. And until you've come to terms with that, until you come to terms with the fact that the brand 
that you're pushing is toxic. You're going to continue to get you, you're going to this 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 election night will not be the only loss that you have. Because you didn't take the house and you're going to lose presidency. OK, you're going to lose the White House, too. You got shellacked. You got your ass, but you are the L.A. Clippers of politics right now, okay? That's what you are. And and the one thing that I want to make very clear to you and and to everybody that's that's on the right, I want to make this perfectly crystal clear. It's up to you to stop the bleeding. It's up to you to decide if you're going to change and and modify your views for the times. That's up to you. Because I can tell you all I can tell you. I can can lead you to water. I can't make you drink. I can tell you what the minorities are, are saying about you, but it's up to you to listen. I can tell you what a lot of women are saying about you, but it's up to you to listen. I can tell you that going forward, you supporting some of the right infringement um, types of ideas is going to be a problem for you because, you know, people feel like their rights are being trampled on right now. And if you blindly support supporting people who are trampling on the rights, well, that's going to be a problem for you. Because Americans historically do not respond well to that. So. I want you to understand. I want the right to win. As harsh as this video sounds, it's harsh criticism because I'm I'm a harsh person. I can be harsh in terms of my criticism. All right. I'm just giving to you raw. I'm giving you the honest, unfiltered truth. You're fucking up. You must change. Or die off as a party. I can't help you but so much. People like the amazing Lucas and and several of those people. We can only help you but so much. And, you know, you listen to people like Stephen Crowley and Sticks Hexenhammer 666. And, you know, as they bitch and moan about how, oh, they cheated. Oh, this is a clear. A bunch of silly shit. They want participation trophies. They are the equivalent of the screaming carriers right now. They are they are the carriers right now of the internet. They are the bitching and whining bitch made motherfuckers who just can't stop bitching about the same dumb shit they've been bitching about for, for, for years and years and years. Claiming, you know, uh I wouldn't say years and years and years. I would say just 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 bitching about, you know, people cheating, things being so unfair, Trump being treated so unfair. Trump is a multi billionaire who's the who was the president of the United States of America. I don't want to I don't want to continue to hear about how a multi billionaire who's the president is being treated unfairly. Shut the fuck up. You know, you keep mentioning Barack Obama. Barack Obama ain't been president in four years. I don't want to keep hearing about how Barack Obama did this and that. I got tired of hearing Barack Obama talk about George Bush. Seriously. So, again, you can adjust or not adjust. It don't really make me a fucking difference. But if I have a choice between voting for a Democrat or Republican, well, I'm going to give you the choice is simple. Let's say that you have a great Democrat and a great Republican because there are great Democrats who run for office and there are great Republicans who run for office. And let's say they're both great. And so I pretty much, they're, 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 my, my voting interest in them is tied at 50-50. You know, I can choose one or the other. But one side says, I'm going to actually scrutinize the bad officers, the bad police officers. One side says, I'm going to, I'm going to end the drug war. Uh, one side says, uh, or, or at least legalize weed. Uh, on a federal level. One side says that I'm going to try to end mass incarceration. One side says I'm going to at least consider reparations, uh, at least for certain people. Well, who do you think who who do you think I'm choosing? Exactly. Anyways, guys. I want you guys to take this Take this, take everything that I've said and 
absorb it. And hopefully, you know, people listen to what I'm saying. And if not, you know, and I don't, I don't profess to know everything, but I do know about this particular, this, this particular subject. This I do know about. This I do understand. So, take what I said to heart. And I understand that I said a lot of mean things in this video. I understand I'm, I could have said it a lot, nice, a lot nicer way. But I wanted to give it, give it to you off the cup and in a long form video because I was told by certain content creators and some of their fans that I couldn't do a long form video with election analysis uh, whereas uh, I was right about something and I've done it several times but this is one long form video where not only am I right I've demonstrated the reason why I'm right and I, I was right about the exact same errors that I was right about so take what I'm saying to heart and hopefully if you're on the right try to change Get with the times. If you can't even be Steve Buscemi in the meme, where you know, hello, fellow kids, you know, because you, you're you're against weed. If you can't even be Steve Buscemi in that meme, you got issues, bro. Seriously, and that, and those issues are going to cost you elections going forward because those young people, you know, the hello, fellow kids, you know, the fellow kids, they're growing up. And as you saw from this election, they're voting now. Anyways, uh, this is my dog, yo, my 135-pound pit bull, Azul. And he's been laying on my lap the whole time. He's been a good boy, you know. He's a good dog, and he allowed me to do my video. So uh, say hello to Azul. Say hello, Azul. Anyways, guys, it's been Devil's Advocate. To hopefully the right size to reverse course some of their issues, and if not, welcome to Democrats winning every general election. Anyways, horns up, peace out.